This is a PowerPoint on unsupported archetypes. There's not much to start with, Death Knight. <laughs> of course, it's brand new. There's still only one uh, entire uh, expansion that's in Wild for Death Knight, so there's not really much to talk about for archetypes. But we can still talk about how triple rune cards have been pretty much scrapped since, like, their inception. Uh, Lady Death Whisper was a Path of Arthas card. L Lord Marogar was a core card. And then Alexander's Morgrain was a Martial Lich King card. And then that's it. We have not gotten triple rune legendaries uh, that weren't, they weren't rainbows. Ooh. But yeah, rainbow has basically taken over Death Knight. They are printing, you know, some twos. Uh for the runes but we have not seen any threes it's kind of very unfortunate because that's you know the main mechanic they introduced death knight with so to not bring it back feels incredibly weird but who knows blizzard sometimes just does stuff like this that really makes no sense but it's been almost two years at this point so if we don't see something next expansion it's probably safe to say that they're gone so let's get to one that is a little more likely to not come back with actually demon hunter uh, Empty Hand Demon Hunter is kind of a retrain of Empty Hand Hunter, but that's the thing. Uh, Empty Hand Hunter never worked. Empty Hand Demon Hunter kind of just like doesn't work. It has very powerful cards, don't get me wrong. Uh, Magnifying Glaive, Sightless Magistrate, Dispose of Evidence are all pretty good cards. The thing is that this is just like a really clunky archetype that kind of doesn't make sense uh, in the scale of Demon Hunter. You know, if you're drawing like a trillion cards, if you're drawing a bunch of cards, how are you ever going to have an empty hand? It doesn't really work too well on pa like in in uh, in practice. On paper, it's kind of makes sense, right? Oh, you have no cards, so just draw them, right? It's it's weird. Uh, I really doubt this will come back if it does anytime soon. We're not, we haven't seen anything for it in over two years at this point. So I really, really doubt we'll see anything for it again. It is just a bit odd. Then we get to Druid. Uh, we have the unspent mana style of Druid cards that come from uh, untapped potential. Uh, we received one card of support ever for this archetype, and it is Spirit of the Tides. And it's a completely unusable, terrible card. So yeah. I really don't think this one will ever come back. It's just, it's hard to make work. Uh, the cards are either incredibly strong because they're actually overcosted to make up for the fact that you have to not spend any mana, which just makes them really good cards. Or, and that's 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 the issue, right? Or they're just really bad cards. Or there aren't any because there just aren't any. Uh, it also doesn't help that the. The quest itself hasn't really gotten any support. Choose one cards have been pretty bad for a long time. Like, they haven't really printed that many good choose one cards, especially to use with the quest. So it's kind of on both ends that, like, unspent mana and choose one are just kind of very un undersupported. But I wanted to highlight more about the un unspent mana thing because it's just a weird kind of little archetype we have that doesn't get any kind of support. Uh, then for Hunter, I have to also bring up Empty Hand Hunter. I, me I, me I mentioned uh, it during the Demon Hunter section because Empty Hand Hunter doesn't work. It doesn't make sense to only benefit when your hand is empty from cards because your hand's not going to be empty. If, you, if your hand is empty, you're losing the game is kind of the thing. Uh, not having cards is bad for you. Card advantage is very strong. Yes, you know, oh, if you play a lot of cards, you can kill your opponent, but you really can't. Uh, I mean, like, look at these cards. Brave Archer, what is this? It's impossible to ever get this effect to go off in a real game. Uh, Core Rager, especially as well. Quick Shot was really good for its time because, like, yeah, you could probably play all your cards back in 2014, 2015, and then draw from Quick Shot. But that's not how the game works anymore. You can't really spend all of your mana in a game. Uh, as Hunter, it's just not possible. You can't spend all the mana in your hand, and you're generating a lot of cards in hand. I, the, some of the Hunter's best cards are generating uh, more cards to use, so it just doesn't really line up or work out in any way. Uh, then we've got Furious Howl. I don't know, Furious Howl just, like, blows. It, it feels like it should be a really good card, just kind of isn't. It, th like, this is part of why I don't think the Demon Hunter will ever come back, is because Hunter failed so badly that the Demon Hunter is like, well... If Hunter's not going to work, and then the Demon Hunter one kind of didn't work, it feels like that it's a waste of time to try and make it work again. That's where I'm coming from for these two. They're kind of a combined section, but we'll, we'll talk about some that are a little more obvious. Uh, then we have Mage. So this one is Light Show. Light Show was so promising. They printed Audio Splitter. It was like a three drop at first, and then they buffed it to two to like try and buff this kind of stuff. You know, Light Show has 
a lot of cards that do synergize with it. It's just, it's so bad. Like, they printed this Rewind card, Audio Splitter, as ways to double up on your light shows, get more of them. You have Raw Math, which also works for your light shows, and just never really works. They didn't really do anything to try and help this at all for light shows time and standard, and it's very unlikely that it will see another card for this, uh in the next expansion, you know, with one left. Light Show just had so much potential that it never really got, and it's kind of sad. Like, if Light Show was two mana, I think the card may have, like, an opportunity to have been good at some point in standard, just using it as, like, a tempo card, but it never really got to do it. It just doesn't do enough damage to start off. It ramps a little too slow, and it costs too much. It's just not that good, and it's very unfortunate because, like, this card could have made a very interesting tempo mage that we just have never seen and will never get to see. Then we have Paladins and Secret Paladin. So Secret Paladin is one of the few on this list that will never come back. It's not just like things that are, oh, you know, maybe they won't come back and they're really undersupported like I'm trying to do for the others. But Secret Paladin will never come back. Secrets have been completely replaced by uh, auras and like all these secret cards just kind of will never come back. Uh, secrets aren't in standard at all anymore, which is a first for all of the, like, is a big first, uh, to see secrets completely gone from standard. It makes you lose out on, like, kind of the history of Hearthstone. You know, you don't have, like, your Mysterious Challengers anymore. You don't have your Oh My Yog. You're sort of fallen. These super iconic secret cards are just never going to get support anymore, and they're going to fall by the wayside as time goes on. It's actually just, like, really sad to see this happen, uh, especially because auras are just, like, honestly less interesting than secrets secrets provide a much different game plan than auras that just like always are there and always are in effect uh like yeah auras are just better cards than secrets but it's just unfortunate uh i guess thematically it makes sense because people were all it was always like a weird thing like why would paladin have secrets so i guess if you want to be like making the most sense sure but it's still a bit odd uh then we have priest so okay this one is definitely the most specific on the list. I know, I know. This is not technically like an archetype, but Xeric's Cloning Gallery Priest was really, really strong at one point in standard. Uh, the whole idea is you played like Xeric's, you would have Gilded Gargoyles, which were three mana 2-2s two with Death Rattle to get a coin. You would you know, ramp towards getting your Xeric's out, and then you would have Maligos, uh, Prophet Velen, and you'd Mind Blast your opponent, and you'd kill them. And it was awesome. Uh, it, it was really popular. It was a really powerful deck that existed for... Uh, short time in standard and then there's just not been anything at all to support this in any way no ways to like discount Zerus cloning gallery no ways to cheat out like malagos or prophet Velen from your deck and do it in a similar way it feels like one of the it feels like something that blizzard never wants to ha have happen again like a full-on otk priest deck like this all other kinds of like otk priest decks have been a lot clunkier they haven't been as smooth as this one they rely more on like charge cards or uh just say something like mechathune which is to like play all the cards in your entire deck things like that like a lot more cards to be played rather than just like a generic otk like you would see more in druid uh this is a more of a druid style otk than a priest one that it's definitely for sure so it, it's kind of interesting that like it when it was around it was very fun to play but i i don't know like, Xeric's Cloning Gallery is such an interesting card. Like, it has such an opportunity to be so powerful because of, like, the implications that it summons different minions with their effects. So, like, if it were cheaper, maybe you could do something cool with, like, Malagos and Velen. But, like, it's just so expensive. There's no real good way to discount it anymore. Or not anymore. In any way, that's just a little sad, if you ask me. Then we have Rogue. Uh, SI7 Rogue. This one is actually really fun. It existed only in Stormwind, which... Probably makes sense because, you know, SI7 is in Stormwind in uh, Warcraft, but I do wish we could see support for this again. You know, we had SI7 Agent all the way back in Classic. We got SI7 Infiltrator in the first core set, I think, or it might have been in... It might have been in one of the first, like, classic updates that we ever got, but still. And then we got all of the other SI7 cards in uh, Stormwind. It was just a pretty good tempo deck you would tempo out all these like si7 cards you would be able to like play si7 assassin and bounce it to destroy some minions and then you would top it with your uh spy master scabs which is of course a five mana seven seven like all the others that would give you gadgets and the one gadget that was really good it was one mana give it plus two attack in stealth so you'd have a six mana uh nine seven with stealth and then you would drop the wind fury uh 
Battlegrounds Battlemaster after that to, you know, get Wind Fury, so it would be a lot of damage. It was a it was a good deck. It was really fun. It uh it wasn't as good as all the other quest lines. It was a lot better once all the other quest lines were nerfed, but it really did impact the standard meta. It was actually very fun. I wish that this deck was playable in wild. It's definitely one of the best designed quest lines. Uh the spy gizmos are pretty fun to play with. It's just it's sad. It's sad to see that it's not really getting any kind of support and probably won't again. Uh, it's really unfortunate. Then we have Shaman. Uh, we have this kind of like buff Death Rattle Shaman. Uh, it, some of you may know that they added Scourge Troll, Death Weaver Aura, and Shadow Suffusion in March of the Lich King. Uh, but there, are, there has been a couple at, like additional Death Rattle uh, spells in Shaman before, like Ancestral Knowledge or Big Bad Voodoo during uh, Roscon's Rumble, things like that. Scourge Troll is such like a weird card because it kind of is just worse than uh what is it? Adaptive Amalgam? Is that the one it's called? Sorry, yes, Adaptive Amalgam, the new amalgam that uh you know will shuffle into your deck and keep enchantments. It's kind of just better than Scourge Troll as a target for this effect. So that's like really unfortunate that they print this card and then don't give it like any real support and then power creep it like a like a year later or a year or two later. It's just incredibly awkward because uh, if you want to be playing these death rattles, you want to get more value out of them. And if you want to get more value out of them, just doubling it isn't as good as having it go off infinitely because like it's just it's just really unfortunate, honestly, that they did that it's come off this way because like a card like Shadow Suffusions would be absurd in like another class. If Shadow of Suffusions was in, like, Hunter, it would be an abs absurdly powerful card. If it was in Priest, it would probably be really strong. It's just, like, Shaman, of all classes, can't make can't make good use of it. It's really sad. Then we have Warlock. Uh, Curse Warlock. Curse Warlock was, you know, dedicated to uh, Voyage to the Sunken City. It's honestly like a weird kind of archetype because we do have archetypes like this sometimes right where you have ramping and things like that light show is supposed to be like this and sandy warlock is currently like this where you're able to ramp your deck and then kill your opponent like playing a lot of control tools and then you know trying to get this to uh to work out and do a lot of damage that way the thing about this is that like it's weird because it, it was strong there were times where it was very strong but it felt more fair than a lot of other like inevitability combo decks like you know well this one of these because of the fact that your opponent could pay mana to get rid of the curses it's it's something that was built in the curses it's not like plagues or you know with helia where helia just leaves them in there forever your opponent has to hard run you know a card to remove it this they can actually pay mana for to take less damage so it had a little bit more like interaction which is something we rarely see in Hearthstone, where you give your opponent actual agency and interaction with your deck. And I wish we would see more things like this. Uh, it, it definitely made the the cards a little bit worse, though, overall. I think that, like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like this archetype could get real, like, support again, and it would make sense. But it probably will be stuck to Sunken City. I hate when they do things like this, where it's, like, one-time one -time archetypes, things like that. But I wanted to talk about this one in a different kind of style because, like, it kind of represents uh, a deck style that is good for the game. Like, yeah, it feels bad to get a lot of curses, but it also feels bad for your opponent when they don't draw that many curses and then you just pay mana for it. And you're like, well, <laughs> yeah. Then we have Warrior. Boombots are actually very iconic to Hearthstone. They've been in since, like, one of the first expansions. Uh, you have, you know, OG Dr. Boom. It's a really popular card. Uh, but we've only ever had four other Boombots cards, and I know that this one might not, you know, warrant its place like some of the others, but I think I want to talk about it. I want to talk about Boombots cards. Uh, I think that we could have a full Boombot archetype. Why can't we have, like, a Blastmaster Boom that's just the same as the, uh, the Kel'Thuzad for Skeletons? Like, why can't there be a Dr. Boom that's, like, resummon every Boombot you've summoned this game, any that don't fit, explode? Why, like, why couldn't that just be a thing? Genuinely. I think that is a very easy to design support card. We already have precedent for it. One to four damage is, like, on average is what? It's, uh... And... I think a D4 averages out to, like... 2.5 or something like that. So it's a little bit stronger than Skeletons, but, you know, the... 
the bo the boom bots are one one step two two so you could say that and then you can make boom like i guess seven mana because isn't kelthuzad eight uh and boom would have to be seven mana it's a different class as well uh the, the cards are different you don't have uh you don't have deathborn which is a really powerful way to get more boom bots i just think it would be fun does that like be, being fun is cool who who wouldn't have a great time playing Boombot Warrior? Like, be real with me. I Boombot Warrior would just be a really fun deck to play. I'm gonna be so honest. So I, I really wish that it would exist. Uh, I, th this one was a little bit more rambling than usual. I just wanted to talk about archetypes that I kind of feel like need more help or just are missing something, and that would like round out what the game has a lot more to offer. And yeah, that's gonna be it for me. If you guys enjoy, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, tell me anything down below. Uh, I have to bring up Trusty Fishing Rod and One Drop Hunter that you know, was printed this expansion. There's two One Drops in the entire expansion. It's Adaptive Amalgam and uh, Catch of the Day, and both of them aren't that great. So, yeah, One Drop Hunter. <laughs> uh, that's going to be it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Peace. Shadows are rising again! Darker than they've ever been